Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight I'm in the Pacific Creek Valley and in 1983 four hunters came to this valley and had a very frightening experience here. I'm going to retrace their steps and then we're going to talk about why they had to leave in the middle of the night. That's next. Okay, so this is a little different than we usually do. I'm going to be having a beer, but it's going to be at the end of the video. I'm also going to be cooking some salmon at the campground in one of the campsites. And the campsite, I believe, is where these hunters stayed at. That's where we're going to have that dinner and we'll wrap up the video there. So. Okay, so in 1983, four hunters came to this valley and they stayed at the Pacific Creek Campground right here. It was late in the deer hunting season, October 30th, 1983, which interestingly enough, that's 40 years ago this month. <laughs> and it's October right now. They stayed in this campground and they were the last ones left in the valley. Jim and Dave decided to pair up on that morning and follow this road in right here that I'm on. And they wanted to get an early start on the hunting. The other two guys stayed back at camp for that day. And they went out here to go into this valley. There's a small opening meadow in the middle of the Pacific Creek Valley. The Pacific Creek Valley is about four miles long with Bull Run Peak at the end of it. And I've been to the top of that. And about a quarter mile wide, maybe. Not very wide. It's a glacially formed valley in the Sierra Nevada. It's in the Sierra Nevada, which is 400 miles long, 50 to 80 miles wide. And we are in Alpine County, which is the least populated county in all of California less than two people per square mile. And that is in the Stanislaus National Forest, which is 898,000 square miles of wilderness, rivers, lakes, streams, just amazing country. And it's one of 10 national forests in the Sierra Nevada. I just love it up here. <laughs> I have a lot of fun, a lot of places to go. So, and we are just about at the meadow where, where it started. So their plan was to get off the trail, cross the Pacific Creek, which is right over there, and go up to the eastern ridge here and have Dave go up higher and then flush some deer down towards Jim. They came into this meadow right here. They also noticed on the trail in, and once they got into the meadow right here, that it was quiet. It was like dead quiet. Normally there's a lot of birds, they see deer, squirrels. It was just quiet, like it is tonight actually. <laughs> and they were standing somewhere in here, in this meadow, and they're discussing their plans when out of the tree line comes this large rock, a really good sized rock, and it went over both of their heads and landed about seven, eight feet from them. Big loud thud. Jim had dropped to one knee with his rifle, ready for action. He was a police veteran, 15 years. They looked at each other and the hair went up in the back of their necks. And they were hoping to hear some voices. Maybe their friends were messing with them. They didn't know. They didn't think it was likely. And so they decided to go over into the trees and investigate, see if they saw someone over there. They didn't see anybody. They didn't hear anything. And they had a really bad vibe about it. And they decided to get back on the trail and head down back towards camp.
while they are walking on this trail right here, something in the forest on this side of the trail was paralleling them. It was in the forest. They couldn't see it. It was just there following them somewhere up this slope this way. Then Jim goes like this and he says, stop. And they both stop together and they can hear whatever it is, go for a little bit longer and then it stops. It's dead quiet. They look at each other, they keep walking. They were getting shaken up at this point. They got about a mile to go back to camp to be with their friends. And then out of the trees, somewhere up in here, a rock comes flying out of the forest and lands on the trail in front of them. Right then, Jim drops to one knee, swings his 30 odd six with a scope on it towards the tree line to see if he can spot whatever it is. He doesn't see anything. They're really shaken up at this point. They know it's not a bear. They know it's not their friends and they can't even see what it is. They continue on and another rock comes out of the trees and this time it just rolls up to the trail. This continues on about every 100, 200 feet. Another rock will come out of the tree line up over here somewhere and land on the trail or next to the trail. They keep walking and they finally get to a point where it starts dropping down right, right here. And just before they get to camp, it's quiet. They can't hear anything over there and the rocks stop being thrown out of the tree line. I think this would be a good time to have my break. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got a beer. This is from the Farmer's Brewing Company. It's called Garage Dweller Hazy IPA. And that is a strange and creepy looking beer. Look at that. It's got a uh, abandoned farmhouse on it with like a guy in it at dusk, twilight. It's a little strange. <laughs> like the idea of it. And that, that is tasty. Hazy IPA. And then we are going to get some salmon going as well, and we'll finish off this story here as well. Ah, that is really good. Wow. <laughs> Garage Dweller Hazy IPA. Cheers. Okay, so I am back at the campsite where I believe they stayed. This is at the end of the road and there's like a loop goes around and if you're hunting you're going to camp right at the end of that loop so when you get up you can just hit the trail and go to your hunting spot. So I think I'm in the exact spot where they <laughs> spent the night or attempted to spend the night. Jim and Dave made it back to camp. They related their experience to their two friends, Steve and Mike, that were back at camp here told them everything that happened, they listened, they thought it was really strange themselves, they believed them, Jim and Dave, what, they, what happened. They, they didn't know what it was, but they believed something happened to them. They said, all right, well, let's, let's make a campfire, let's have some dinner, we got a big day of hunting tomorrow, pull our gear together. Also mentioned that camp this camp where they had spent the day was quiet as well. Dead quiet, there was no animals, 
those sounds they usually there's squirrels and birds and sometimes they said even a, a martin will come out of the creek right over here and come up to their camp so after dinner they were sitting around the campfire getting ready for the next day they're working on their gear getting it all prepared when just outside the lantern light just across the creek they heard this tree come crashing down in the forest a large tree and they all looked at each other and they were startled because they knew there was no wind and the chance of a tree just randomly falling in the forest I mean the tree does fall in the forest but it just didn't make sense to them they were pretty shooken up and they decided nobody's going to get any sleep so let's just pack up and get out of here doesn't seem like something four hunters would do but once that fear kicks in that primal fear primal fear is defined as an innate fear that is programmed into our brains a primal fear is something you cannot control or face to stop the triggers cause our fight flight or freeze response whether we want them or not so I believe what happened was to these four hunters, four hunters with 30 odd sixes with scopes on them. And I'm not against guns. Guns are very helpful. But when you have this fear that takes over you, and I've talked to enough people, I've listened to enough stories, I've talked to people directly about this, that this fear can take over and you just want to just go you want to just get out of there there's no we're going to deal with it we're going to it's just like it's a survival thing and i believe that's what happened to them and i believe that's why they left in the middle of the night or at night to get out of here didn't want to deal with it didn't want more things to happen and your survival instincts tell you you know what we're ahead, we're all together, we're alive, everything's good. We've had enough warnings all day long and whatever this is does not want us here in this valley. And that's why they left. That's my opinion. I'd like to hear your opinions on that as well. So, I also believe that uh, when they were out in the meadow when there was a rock, the rock, the first rock was thrown. They were thinking, this couldn't be a person. What person <laughs> in their right mind would go, hey, I'm gonna sit in the forest and throw rocks out of the trees at hunters that have rifles and think that's a good time and do that in a wilderness area randomly. <laughs> Not likely, so it just, <laughs> Everything just points to Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Really crazy. Also, Jim mentioned he only came to this campsite and this campground in the Pacific Creek Valley one other time. He came here 1984, a year later, after this thing that happened here, 1983 with his cousin to do some fishing. And they had a tent set up and there was a screen door on it. And the screen door was open. You know, you can zip it so it's 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 uh, closed and then it's you can't see through it. But the screen, the mesh was open. And they had the Coleman lantern in the tent. And out at the picnic table, he saw something upright, really large, walk up to his red and white cooler that was sitting right on the bench and it put his hands around it and he noticed this he could see just enough of this thing it was silhouetted but it was an upright form being and his natural <laughs> his natural response was to yell like he's yelling at a bear and he says hey put that down and this thing dropped the cooler turned and ran off into the darkness and he was shaken up by that and he never came back here after that ever again 
but his first response was just to yell like he's you're messing with our food and then all of a sudden he realized what he'd possibly seen he didn't see it really clearly but he could see a silhouette that was upright and very very large <laughs> messing with their food <laughs> also this happened a year before 1981 maybe 82 where Jim and Dave were hunting with Mike just the three of them this time and they were up in the same meadow along the Pacific Creek and they're in the meadow and they're walking through the meadow gonna head out and do their thing and then they heard in the trees where the creek bed is this loud screaming high-pitched screaming like something was in pain they looked at each other and they looked at the trees and they decided to go into the trees and, and into the creek bed and the creek was running kind of low then and they walked up the creek bed and they found a deer this is kind of graphic so if you don't like graphic things with animals you might want to turn the volume off or something <laughs> they found this deer with his front leg broken off and gone it was missing and if it had to walk on that leg, it would be walking on bone. It was missing about this much of it. Completely gone, they didn't see it anywhere. And interestingly enough, another hunter heard it and came in through the woods from the opposite direction and into the creek bed. And they were talking about this thing and the poor deer was suffering. And so they, all three, all of them decided to put the deer down, put him out of its misery. Really sad. They went and told a ranger, and interestingly enough, he didn't seem to think much of it. He didn't seem to care about it. They didn't think that was related until after these other things had happened to them. Really interesting. So with that, I'm going to start the salmon. Okay, so we are cooking late night in the campground. There's a couple other vehicles here, so that's, that's kind of pleasant. I have the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. This is a great little, little stove. And it's, there we go. Look how quick that is. Back in the old days, we had the uh, Coleman Peak 1. Had to pump it, and prime it, and adjust it. This thing just fires right up, it's great, so. That down a little bit. Look at that. <laughs> like a crazy person. <laughs> All right. And we have some Atlantic salmon right here. And we are going to put that. Let's see. Let's get this over here. We're going to add some lemon pepper to that. That is a really good way to go. Oh, look at that. Delicious. Okay. And then we have Premier Extra Virgin Olive Oil for our little packable skillet here. It's my little backpacker skillet. that heat up just for a little bit. Boy, the weather's been really nice today. I don't know if it's 75 or something, but it's October and it's been a very nice, very nice day. All right, let's give you time to salmon on. Oh yeah. I'm also gonna add a salad to this. So it's gonna be pretty simple. Salmon and salad, and beer, of course. <laughs> yeah, I hope I don't hear any trees go down behind me. That would... <laughs> so 
I'm going to finish my salmon. I don't care, primal fear or not, I'm eating my salmon. So that's that's how it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but I want to hear your thoughts on that level of fear, that primal fear, and experiences that you guys have had where it just takes over and this fear is just uncontrollable and just, when you feel it like later in life, <laughs> it, and it comes back and it's, it sends chills up your spine, your hair goes in the, up in the back of your neck and all those things, and whatever it does in the long term, I don't even know, but I know some of you have experienced that from whatever thing happened, whatever experience you've had, so, yes. I do love salmon. Jeanette and I cook salmon every Friday. It's, it's a, kind of our little thing. We usually have asparagus, baked potato, salad, and a glass of wine with our salmon, so it's a, that's, our, that's our routine. It's a good routine. So tonight I'm doing this by myself in, in the woods. It's dark out here, I gotta say. There's no moonlight. It's just black as could be. And that forest I was in, it's very thick in there. The meadow was really open, but then you get into that forest. Wow, it's just... It's dark in there. In the middle of the day, it's dark in that forest, in parts of it. And because this valley's so narrow, it's a literally a U-shaped valley, glacial-formed valley. And the sun sets here really early. And I've been trying to get up here for the last few nights. I came up here last night and I was like, this is too late to be starting out and heading down the trail going to the, the big meadow and stuff and it's like I'm gonna be caught caught in the dark out here so that was not a that was not something I wanted to do and so tonight I came earlier and was able to pull it off so at least I'm not still a mile and a half out in the valley there in the middle of the valley in the meadow so this is coming along here oh yeah it's cooking Okay, the salmon is done. Check that out. That's not good. Add that there. And we have our salad. We're gonna have a Paul Newman's own raspberry walnut vinaigrette. And that is gonna be really tasty on here. Oh yeah, there we go. And we got the beer right here, so. That is our dinner tonight. Mm. That is really good. The lemon pepper really sells it. All right, you guys, I'm gonna finish eating and get out of here. <laughs> before some tree goes down. But thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate your comments as always. And thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. And as always, keep hiking.